Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at layers and how they can help you out a great deal. Uh, when you create something in GIMP uh, or Photoshop um, or almost any uh, graphical editing package for that matter, um, you add your masterpieces to the canvas. Okay, so it's just like painting on a piece of paper. Right? If I paint um, this wavy line here and then I paint something else over the top of it, um, anything that's underneath is automatically obliterated by what goes on top. Now there might be situations where you don't want to do that. You want something to go over the top but you want to keep what's behind it. And the way that we do that in uh, GIMP is by using layers. Now have a look on the right hand side. You'll notice here uh, there's this label it says background and there's like a little miniature picture of what I've got going on in my, uh, in my main image here. Now down the bottom right uh, is this uh, icon. Uh, if you hover over it, it will say create a new layer and add it to the image. And when you click it, you will get this dialog box pop up. Okay, so think about layers as like sheets of uh, clear paper lying on top of each other. You can paint on top of them, you can move them around um, as much as you want, and anything uh, that's um, on top of something else will be visible. Anything that's behind uh, the the other layers will be will be invisible. But you can have transparent bits. It allows you to create some pretty cool um, looking images. Okay, so um, I'm going to create this new layer. Um, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it um, uh, my new layer, which is a terrible name, um, but this is just for an example. Uh, I'll show you a working example shortly, um, so uh, you can you can see how you should probably name your layers. Uh, you'll notice there's various different modes that you can select. I recommend selecting normal to start off with. I am going to show you some more advanced ones a little bit later on. Um, you can keep everything else pretty much default. You can change the width of your layers. Um, by default, it will um, set them to the same size as your canvas, which is probably what you want. Okay. Make sure that fill with transparency is set. Otherwise, everything will get. Um, it, it'll look like everything's been uh, been erased. Okay. So I go to OK, and now you can see I've got a new layer. Um, you've got to be very careful to make sure that when you go to paint, you are on the layer that you want to uh, paint onto. So at the moment, I've got the background layer selected. I'm going to select my new layer. You can see that's the one highlighted. It's slightly darker color. And now I'm going to change my um, uh, paint brush to green, uh, and I'm just going to paint over the top. Now you'll notice, if you have a look carefully here, on my new layer, um, I've got um, some green bits and on the background I've still got that, uh, the, the blue and red that I had drawn. Uh, if I just use the eraser tool, uh, when I rub out parts of my green, you can see uh, the stuff underneath still um, shows through. So I don't know if you've ever done that thing where you, uh, you scribble all over a piece of paper uh, and then, uh, then colour over the top of it with, uh, with black um, wax crayon and then scrape away the wax crayon to reveal the colors beneath um, here's something that you could uh, you could try if you haven't done that we're just going to um, randomly cover the um, screen in various different colors here um, don't know what it's going to look like let's choose that color um, let's get some blue in there okay here's my here's my background layer it it doesn't look amazing but that's not we're not really going for amazing at the moment um, add a few more colors in a slightly thinner brush okay and then in my new layer what I'm going to do is fill the whole thing with black. Now the way that I'm going to fill it all with black, I'm going to use the paint bucket tool here, uh, select the bucket fill, and I am going to select black as my color. There it is, there's black. And then I just click, and it should, hopefully, fill in the whole layer. Uh, it's missed a couple of bits for some reason. Not entirely sure why, but I'm going to, uh, uh, to paint 
those bits in here. Okay. So all that background layer is still there and now here's the cool thing that we can do. We can erase bits of this new layer and when we write our um, text uh, we get some uh, some nice funky colors uh, showing through underneath. Um, there we go and let's fill that in. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, let's use the magic wand. We're gonna that's not going to work properly. Okay, but you get the idea. Okay, now how about a practical example here? Uh, I'm going to get rid of my new layer here. Um, so to get rid of a layer, select the layer and then um, you can right click on it and there should be an option to delete the layer. There we go, delete layer. Okay, and it's gone. Uh, I'm going to delete everything that's in uh, in my background. The way that I'm going to do that is by pressing Control A to select everything, and then just hitting the Delete key on my keyboard. Boom, it's gone. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to create a Superman-looking image. Okay. So um, I've got a couple of um, uh, images already, and I've shared these up on the Google Classroom, so you will be able to follow along if you want to. Uh, first of all, we're going to use this image, the city image. Um, now, the easiest way of getting your images into your um, uh, your masterpieces, uh, you can click and drag. If you if you click from the uh, folder where they're stored, click and drag them over the top of your canvas. Uh, they should automatically appear in there. Now you'll notice here the city, uh, it doesn't quite fill all of the space. We want to make sure that it fills all of the space. So we are going to uh, resize it here. Um, and we are going to use the, do we want the uh, scale tool? That's the one. So this one here allows you uh, to resize the, um, the image. We want to make sure that it fits the whole thing. Now you'll notice what I haven't done here, uh, I haven't stretched it out. Okay, I've dragged by the corners each time to make sure uh, that it doesn't get squashed. Okay, and then once I'm ready, I'm just going to click on scale. Okay, and then we hope we should get a. S that, why isn't that working? Oh, there we go. Um, it will scale it up, but you need to make sure you click on the little green icon down the bottom to finalize the uh, uh, the scaling. There we go. I've got a I've got a um, a city here. At the moment, it's created a new layer. It's called it transformation. I am just going to rename that to city, uh, and then I'm going to delete these other two layers. Let's delete that layer, uh, and let's delete the background layer. Oops. I'll delete the layer. Um, there we go. So I've just got this one layer. It's called City. Okay. Next up, we're going to get Superman onto the um, uh, onto the cityscape here. So I'm just going to drag and drop Superman in there, and there he is. Okay. Now at the moment, Superman. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, I mean, he's looking all right. Let's move him into the right position. We're going to use this double-headed arrow. You'll remember that from when you moved the uh, the guidelines. Now I want Superman on the front cover, which is on the right-hand side here. So I'm going to click on that. Now you've got to be careful here. When you click to move something, um, by default the move tool is set to pick a layer or guide, which will automatically start moving the um, the layer that the mouse is over, which is probably not always what you want. So what I normally do is click on move the active layer and then you know that wherever you click it's going to move whatever layer you've got selected. So I want to move Superman uh, into the position where he needs to be. Uh, let's move him there. Okay. Now, uh, we want to get rid of all of that white stuff around Superman. We want it to look like he's really there. Well, sort of. Um, and so, 
this is what we're going to do. We're going to use something called a layer mask. Uh, and what a layer mask does is it allows you to delete parts of your, um, your layer, but in a way that you can easily bring them back again. So um, down the bottom uh, there is this icon. Uh, it's got, it looks like a piece of paper with a tiny little mask next to it. Make sure that your Superman layer is selected and click on the layer mask. Now you'll get this stuff pop up. Just keep everything on the default uh, and click on add. And you'll notice next to your Superman you will get an extra box. Now you can edit what's in the actual layer by clicking on the left hand box but you can edit the mask by clicking on the right hand box. If you colour in the mask in black it will make whatever you colour in invisible. If you colour it in white it will bring it back again. If you colour it in grey it will fade it out. Okay, So if I select black here, I'm going to select my, uh, my black brush uh, and when I paint over it you can see wherever I paint that bit disappears. It's kind of like you're using the eraser tool but if I change the colour back to white again when I paint over the top of it it brings it back. Okay, Now how is this going to be useful to us? Well what we can do is we can use the magic wand tool um, to uh, select all of the bits around Superman and just fill it in black. Okay, so I'm going to select magic wand here at the top. I'm going to click on one of the white bits, making sure that my layer mask is selected, so the bit on the right. Um, nope, I lied. It should be the bit on the left when you're making the selection. So make sure the bit on the left is selected. Click on the magic wand tool. You'll notice you get these marching ants all the way around Superman. Now is the bit where you need to make sure that you've got the layer mask selected. So click on the layer mask on the right and then you are going to use the paint bucket tool to fill in all of that selection with black and as if by magic there we go we've gotten rid of all of the stuff around Superman um, now obviously that works if it's a single color if it's more complicated than that what you might have to do is just uh, carefully paint around it using black um, until you until you get rid of all the stuff now at the moment it's difficult to see what's going on there because we've still got that selection on there. So, so to get rid of the selection we're going to hold down Control Shift and A. So Control Shift A will deselect everything. Now if you zoom in on Superman there you'll notice he's got this kind of a bit of a white outline where where the white bits were which is yeah I mean it's not it's not great. So um, we're going to help him out. Uh, what we're going to do is undo what I just did because I'm going to show you how you can get rid of those white bits before you apply the mask. So we'll just control Z to undo the layer mask. I pressed it twice there. Okay, And then um, once again we're going to select the actual layer. Uh, we're going to use uh, the magic wand to select all of the stuff around him. Now the next thing we're going to do is go to select up here and then select grow. Okay, and what Grow does is it expands the selection. Uh, I'm going to switch it to Pixels. I want to grow the selection by one pixel. Okay, now I go to OK, and you'll notice the marching ants are closer around Superman's body there. So now I'm going to switch back to the uh, to the mask again, and I'm just going to fill in everything with black. And now when I press Control Shift A to deselect everything. It looks a lot nicer. Look, I can zoom right into Superman. You can see there's no white bits around him at all. There he is. Okay, um, and um, that's just some of the stuff that you can uh, use layers for. Uh, one thing that um, a lot of people ask, because uh, they're used to um, uh, ordering things around in PowerPoint and stuff like that um, but if you want to change the order in Photoshop you simply drag and drop the layers okay so if I want my city to be over the top of Superman I drag the city and now the city is over the top of Superman if I want to get Superman back over the top of the city I drag him and there he is okay um, and that's about it for the video